going. You are live. Yeehaw. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Let's say, Miss Carrie. Hello, hello there. We've got a few minutes before people are officially here, don't we? <coughs> yeah. So, so, we'll do a little. Now, are we going to come up? You don't, you don't get a notice every time someone clicks on, do you? Yeah. Uh, there's a little indicator that says. Like one person in there, two people are in there. Oh, okay. And then if they write into the comment section or the chat, right? You know, we can notify or let them know. Or we get notified. Hey, I'm, I'm learning how to handle this stuff, folks. And as usual, let us know if we have any microphone problems. We've been doing pretty good inside here on the podcast. So the question is, if we can still do good tonight. Hold on. Piddle and diddle for a few minutes. Give a few more people a chance to sign on. So <clears throat> tonight's You're so cute, Winnie. Tonight's topics is puppies and mostly are starting out with horse housebreaking. That's one of the the biggies, right? Retriever? Yes. So she ever have trouble housebreaking a dog? Yes. <laughs> I think everybody has. That's a universal yeah. issue, especially for first-time dog owners. Yeah, yeah. We're, and that's what we're going we're gonna to try to address is for first-time dog owners. We'll do that and a few other things. We get in depth with several different ways to do it. This is an example. This, this, is, this is little Winnie. I call her Winnie Hood, sir. She knows her name. Um, anyway, she's a, if I remember right, she's about a 14, 15-week-old. She's a cavapoo, <clears throat> or cavadoodle, I don't know how you put it. Cavadoodle sounds good. Cavadoodle yeah. sounds good, okay. She's a cavadoodle. That does sound better than poo, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So, she's a cavadoodle, and uh, she might do some demonstrations for us here in a little bit, but she, that's one of the reasons she's here uh, at, at the kennel. We're, we're helping her with her house breaking. We'll go over how we're doing it with her. We'll go over some things that... Hopefully it'll help every first time dog owner in just a minute. Uh, in 14 weeks, you'd be surprised what a puppy can do to figure out. And everyone's different, so everyone has a little slightly different uh, learning curve. The smaller the dog, the quicker they can learn, because they mature way faster. So at 14 weeks, she's eh, probably at the same level that a 18 week old uh, Short hair pointer, German Shepherd, Golden Retriever would be. So she's capable of learning quite a lot. The only downside is she's way down here and I'm way up here. So I don't, you know, you feel the bending over exercises I'm not even before I carry. That's right. So, you want to see what she can do? I want to see. Let's see what she can learn. Yeah, okay, let me see. You, you take her. You ready, cameraman? Stand. Yes, yes sir. Cameraman, stand. Winnie, I check Winnie because I know so, her. So you can start oh, with your puppy. Oh, you as soon as they're, as soon as they're so old enough to eat, you can start so imprinting little. behaviors on them. By imprinting so behaviors, you can get in to listen to commands. So, stand over here. Where are you when you step over there? Okay. And I'll come over here. All right. So, so one of the things you're going to do with, with Winnie, you can start all puppies, so will always come to you. There's a discipline recall. That's when they come and they sit in front of you. We'll show you two discipline recalls, I hope. She knows I've got some treats, so she's all gone ho. So we're just going to put her down on the ground, and I'm going to say, front, whoops, and she's got to come, but she, nope, good girl. You notice she has to come and sit. She can't just jump up. The second thing we can ask her to do, this is a toughie, we can ask her to be patient. Winnie, stay, no, stay, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go back to her, always return, good girl, and let her know how good she did. So, remember what I said about a discipline recall? <coughs> when you call the dog to come to you and it goes to a specific position. The front command is designed to make it come to you, sit in front, so you can quickly reattach your leash in case your dog goes back to home to chase a cat or something right across the street. The second discipline recall is the heel. And when we say heel, the way I teach it, I don't teach it as a come to me or walk with me command, it's a be at my left side command. If I'm standing still, you're seated beside me. 
if I'm walking, you come join me in the walk, and we walk beside me. So you start off teaching them to come, like a discipline recall, and then later you can call them from 100 yards away, but he will. So we're going to see what little Winnie can figure out. She's got to figure out how to come to me, go around me, and come back and sit. She's got to sit every time. You ready, Winnie? You're standing up looking cute. You ready? Heel, heel. So she goes around. She comes back. She gets beside me, and she sits. There you go, little Winnie. There you go, baby Fruity. So you see, even at this young age, come on, darling. You can do a lot with a puff. You're so cool, Megan Austin Gaming. Yeah. She's she's actually, I thought she's kind of a mean dog because she's greedy. And I think she's kept all the cute for herself. She didn't leave none for nobody else. So what a greedy she little is critter. Cute. Hey. So we're gonna let her walk around sniff on the long shot that I dropped a piece of chicken somewhere. What type of dog is that? This is the Cavid Doodle, we decided, right? <laughs> yep. And they may be saying Cab of Poo because it, Winnie the Poo. I don't know. But for us, she's a Cab of Doodle because everything they make from the Poodle anymore is a Doodle something, right? Yeah. So Husky Doodles, There's Saluki husky doodles. doodles. I think my favorite one was the, uh, the Schnoodle. The Schnoodle, the schnoodle. yeah. Schnoodles the are cool. Schnoodle. Yeah, Schnoodles are cool. I liked, yeah, I liked yeah. the oh, Schnoodle. What was that one? Uh, uh, he kind of looked like a, a Bernice Mountain Dog color. Oh, Bernudo. Yeah, Bernudo. Bernudo. Yeah, what was it, Bernice? A Bernudo. A Bernudo. 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 Yeah, I think Theory. that was one of my favorites. Theory being, anything you mix with a poodle is going to be better for it. I, you know. Does anyone know? Here's a trivia for you. Does anyone know where the original uh, Labradoodles came from? Who started all that? Someone that was born and wanted to just. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody with too much time on their hands. Too much time. <laughs> it was actually a guy in Australia who did service dogs, and he's not happy with where the the uh, the breed and you call it a breed is gone at this point in time. But anyway, yeah. interesting, interesting. <clears throat> so let's get back to housebreaking. Everybody, obviously, you know, in your grandparents and great grandparents' generation, dogs didn't stay in the house. So today, that's a big challenge, and it's kind of a new, you know, a new thing, uh, relatively new. Because again, you know, if you, I think if you go back to William Kohler, who was the big dog American dog trainer in the 50s, he's got a whole series of books, and I don't think one of them addresses uh, housebreaking because hmm. dogs stayed outside. They had a dog house, right? Yeah, my dogs. <laughs> Yeah, but you weren't you were around in the 50s either, Carrie. If I was, they would still sleep yeah, inside. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the housebreaking came on, you know, with the modern era. And it's been approached like a lot of things from the modern era, which is how much money can a big corporation make off of this thing? <laughs> and we will tell you how to do it. So, we, you know, <clears throat> we got crate training that the father grass people love because everybody's got to get a crate for their dog. Um, You've got, you know, I don't know, you've got the wee wee pads. You got, but there's always something, you know. You can always trace a new training method to some product at the same time. Where did he come in? So we're going to go back to some basics because there's nothing more basic and nothing more simple than housebreaking. Think about it for a minute. Let's break everything down to its foundation. We're talking about a biological process. X amount of product goes in to the cycling machine. The cycling machine right here cycles it. Takes so many minutes to cycle. <coughs> and X amount of product comes out of the cycling machine. Simple as that. So the first thing you want to do is put your dog on a regular feeding schedule. The people that have the most trouble housebreaking the dog are the people who free feed. Because, you know, Little Winnie can just go nibble whenever she wants to, and if she's nibbling whenever she wants to, there's no way you can keep track to know when she needs to go out. If you don't ever let her out, you got to hope she can figure out to go on the pads, and if she doesn't try to figure out how to go on the pads, she's going to figure out how to go somewhere else where you haven't seen her do it, and later that night when you go to bed, you're going to step in something under your bed. So the first thing you want to do is get her on the regular feeding schedule. Now you can time her. With a puppy, 
Once you feed that puppy, I'll guarantee you that their metabolism, because they're growing, is really, really fast. So once you fed the puppy, you can count on 20 minutes at the most. She's gonna, it's gonna have a bowel movement, right? We're among friends, you guys can. Can, can you do define what free feeding is uh, more specifically? Yeah, good question. Thank you. Keep, keep me going here, right. Mm. When I say free feeding, I mean it's out all the time for the dog to go get. They're free to go get it whenever they want and eat as much as they want or as little as they want. That really has a lot of bad health implications other than the, the housebreaking and Maybe someday we'll address torsion and bloat and these other things that free feeding can cause. It can kill your dog. Uh, <clears throat> but, but that's what it is. The dog has the freedom to go nibble whenever he wants to go nibble. Dogs are not designed to nibble, but we'll get into that in another topic. If you put your dog's, your puppy's food down, it will eat right now. Once it eats right now, you pick up that food. And if it doesn't eat in 10 15 minutes at the most, pick up the food anyway. You now know that in the next 15 to 20 minutes, this dog's gonna need to poop. So, open the back door, let the pup go out in the backyard. And I understand there's a, all sorts of people, the popular thought is, you gotta stand out there with your dog and wait till it poops. You know, people are calling me all, people call, a lady called me this morning. I went out there, I waited for her to poop, she was out there for a half an hour, and then she came back in and pooped on my rug. But I have to be there to tell her she did good when she did it, because that way she'll know she should be doing it. Have you ever taken a long road trip, you know, like when you got to, you know, and you drank a lot of iced tea or whatever on the way on the trip, and when you finally get to your destination, the first thing you want to do is hit the... Relieve yourself. Yeah, relieve yourself, <laughs> right? When you relieve yourself, <coughs> does it feel good? Hey. I guess. Well, does it feel, it does not feel not good. Right. Are you more comfortable? Pee? Yes. I should know better than to ask a complicated question than go to the Um So yes, when you finally get there and you get I feel the chance, fantastic. You feel yes. much better, much better. So you don't need to get out there and tell the puppy, oh, good dog, because the puppy's going, I feel much better. Just like. Carrie would be, right? So let them out there. Here's the thing you gotta think, remember with dogs. They're gonna use their nose. First off, dogs like to stay clean. That's why they sold you this thing about crate training, because they know the pups don't want to pee and they lay in their own mess. So if you get them an opportunity to go outside, they're gonna go outside. And when they poop or pee outside, the next time you let them out, when they go to that spot and like, when he's doing right now, sniffing the ground, when they find that spot, they're going to pee there again, or poop. And that's going to start defining where they go. So what happens when you have had accidents in the house? Because you're going to have accidents because you're not timing this. You're just throwing the food out there and then going about your daily going about, or putting them in a crate. And most of the people who come to me with one or two year old dogs say they crate train the dog for housebreaking. So all the dog ever learned was, you know, I don't want to peel myself. It never learned peeing in the house is a bad thing. <laughs> it just learned, I don't want to peel myself in the crate. You didn't let me out quick enough, so it's simple as that. So they're going to go back to odor. You can always remember that. Get them outside after that meal. You're going to probably pick, uh, solve most of your problems. But what happens when they drink a bunch of water and you're not aware of it, and all of a sudden they go, and they pee in the, in the room. Well, they poop. Please don't stick your dog's nose in it. But you do have to discipline them. You have to let them know that otherwise, they're gonna keep going there. They've gotta learn the rules of the pack. And that's one of the rules. My living room rug is not a toilet, right? So we're gonna mark that bad behavior with a, with a correction. How are you gonna correct them, Kara? I'm gonna beat them. <laughs> yeah. so, um, I, I personally use scruffing because um, it works for yeah. my dog. How's it it work? works for one of my dogs. So how do you scruff? I just grab the loose skin on the back of their neck and I just, I personally, I pick him up 
till he's where he's looking at me. I pick him up off his front feet because I want him to feel it. When he's crying, I tell him no. <laughs> I tell him no with it, but I've only had to scrub my dog, I think twice, two good times, and now when I tell him no, he automatically stops what he's doing. Because what? When he hears the word no? He don't want to get scrubbed. There you go. He remembers pain. <laughs> I made it. I'm gonna hurt. I didn't. I didn't have to do it very hard. They're right. they're very. Right. He's sensitive. He's a baby. And so she's dead on. Now the scientists will tell you they're really good to punish the dog because they can't remember that they made that mess. Right. You got to catch him in the act. Most popular scientific myth on the planet. Yeah. I love that one. Huh? I love it when people say that. Yeah. Yeah. I just laugh. So here's the thing. That. Amazing discovery about animal brains was made by scientists. These scientists, now let's, let me give these scientists their credit, folks. But first off, they went to college and got a degree. That's one for the scientists. Second off, their job is every day, they go into work <coughs> and they let whatever animal they're studying out of the cages and they stick them in places doing things they've never done and they write down the results, right? Then they go to lunch and they come back and they let out some more animals and they study them doing this and they study them doing that. And then at the end of the day, they go home and they feed their goldfish. As I say, not one of them probably owns an animal. Yeah, oh, that's their job. Goldfish. So, yeah, so their, their understanding of, the, of, of animals, I believe is written on paper and they, they don't put a lot of logic to it. So. Let's just reason this out like, well, like an old cowboy would do. A dog can bury a bone in January, somewhere out on the Great Plains, up right around Amarillo. He can go back in May, because he's hungry, and wander around his Great Plains and dig up that bone that he buried in January. But yet, they cannot remember what they did yesterday. Hmm. Or, for that matter, they can't remember that that smell they're smelling is their very own poop that they did four hours ago. What do you think about that, Carrie? I think it's crap. Now that's what's on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. But you're right. It's it's crap. So you know. So and obviously you don't need to stick your dog's nose in it because he smells it way further far away than you do. So yeah. he knows it's his. Yeah. What we're gonna do is we're, the scientific theory is this. Your dog's not exhibiting signs of guilt, as most dog owners will tell them that. The scientific theory is, when you find the mess, you are angry. And when you're angry, your voice tones betray your anger. And when, and when your dog hears you being angry, they go, oh, please don't be mad at me. I love scientists. You love scientists. <laughs> How many? Never mind, no, we don't yeah. need numbers. I'm um, sure there have been several. <laughs> so. Just kidding. JK, <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> So, J.K., I just got that. So, just kidding. So we're we're gonna give, we're gonna give a nod to the scientists. <coughs> we're gonna make sure. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna go to the si scene of the crime. We're gonna call our dog into the room with the happiest voice we can muster in those circumstances. So we're gonna go, Winnie, come here, Winnie, what you doing? And and if instead of jumping up being happy like little Winnie just was. If the dog oh, yeah. sneaks into the room or walks into the room, spots you at the pile of poo and acts like this, now we know. This dog knows what it did. Once the dog, once you're convinced that the dog understands what they did wrong, it's fair to, to correct them. It's fair to beat them. Right. <laughs> Don't beat your dog. I'm just kidding. And, and what you're going to do is you're going to say the word no first, then you reach down and scruff the dog. That'll mark the behavior is not good. Then you'll take your puppy and put it somewhere in the backyard, isolated. <clears throat> you put it in your crate if you want to. And that way, that's the punishment, being alone. There's nothing, they're pack animals, there's nothing dogs want more than being with everybody. So, <clears throat> so, so but you kept saying a, a term, uh, and we always like to make sure we're using the correct vocabulary for all of these terms so people understand. You keep saying crate training, crate training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are they really training or are they doing mm -hmm. Excellent question, Mr. Smith. <clears throat> of 
great training is like a lot of terms in the animal world. Woody, you're so cute. Well, you gotta, Woody, get up here, baby. Come here. Come here. You want to come up here with me? These are terms coined by, in this case, someone who wants something to sell. It's like the term horse breaking, wherein you are supposedly teaching a colt to be ridden. You're not breaking the horse, are you, Stan? Uh, I hope not. They cost a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, they're expensive. And by the same token, when they say crate training, you are not training a crate, are you? I hope not. That'd be you. That'd be a little weird. <laughs> get you on TV, probably. Right. <laughs> or in the crazy oh. house. Yeah, or the crazy house. Yeah, so, the crazy house. I yeah. tell my crate to stay. In a crate jacket. <laughs> so, they have a, a pretty white jacket for you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, crate training should more accurately be termed crate restraint. Because the dog, to, to, to me, training implies you've learned something. And then you practice it. That's where training comes in. I have a different way of thinking about that than most people. But once you learn an action, you practice and you get better at it. You can call it practice, you can call it training. It doesn't mean the same thing. All your dog does when he gets in a crate is avoid his own mess. He's not learning to not pee in your house. The majority of the people that come to me with 18, I mean, an eight, six, eight, seven month old dogs because they're not housebroken yet. Yeah. I'll ask them, did you crate train the dog? And eight out of 10, you know, Stan, they say, yep. Mm -hmm. He won't go in the crate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he won't go in the crate, but he sure will go in my living room. Yep. So it's crate restraining. <clears throat> it's handy for people who, you know, they're gonna go to work and they don't they don't trust their dog because they haven't trained it. Here's a simple way you can Train your dog to never ever mess in your house by the time it's the time you've had it for four weeks. This will work 100% of the time if you'll do this. It also <coughs> means your dog doesn't have to live in a box. You know, that's that's something they used to call, they still call torture when they put men in a box, but they put <laughs> dogs in there for eight or ten hours and, oh, it's training. We're just training our doggy. It's their room, Butch. It's their room. They love being in a room they can just stand up and turn around in. That's so much fun for so many hours a day. So let's get them out of the box. Try this. You get you a utility room, laundry room, some some room that's got a tile floor, preferably. You don't, it doesn't need to be a bit better off not being a really big room, like six by six, something of that nature. Go get as many newspapers, if they even can find a newspaper. We still have some around here. So get as many as you can. If you can't find that, you might go to a craft store, any place you can get some sort of roll of paper. And what you're going to do is, like these squares on the floor here, you're going to cover the floor in this small room with papers. And at the front of the room, you're going to put the water bowl and any toys and a bed that the dog has. And you're gonna go all the way to the back with this paper, wall to wall, front to back. Put your dog, add some toys, put some toys in there, go to work, come back eight hours later, 10 hours later, however many hours a day you work, go back to that room, you're gonna find wherever the dog peed and pooped, and it's gonna be right there in the paper. You're gonna pick it up real easy, throw it away. Put two layers, three layers thick if you want to. You're gonna do that for one week. The second week, take up the row at the front of the house, of the room, where the food and the water is. Go to work, come back, clean it up. Every three to five days, pick up another row until you're down to one row. I guarantee you, your dog will keep going back to the newspaper until you have one square of newspaper back in the back corner, and that's the only place that dog will go. You can then take some newspapers, stick it in your backyard, and when you get home, let the dog out in the backyard, and there's going to be, because remember, they go to odor. That's what tells them where to go to the bathroom. So this three or four weeks, pee them on these pads. You can use puppy pads as well. I'm sorry I forgot that. You can use puppy pads as well as newspaper. Maybe even easier. What's a, what's a good tip instead of using the expensive puppy pads? Ah, yes, yes, you can, you can go, thank you, Stan. 
you're on your you're on your toes tonight. You can go and you can get to go to your favorite pet store, and you can get a box of 24 pads for 39.99. I'm just throwing out a price, but I'm not far off. I'll bet you. Or you can go to Walgreens, Walmart, any drugstore in town. You can get people pads that are even bigger, and you can get a hundred count for $39.99. <laughs> And they're going to tell you the puppy pads have this scent, and that's attracts them. The scent is paper. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's... So cover your deal and uh, pick up pad one at a time. Correct the dog. Correct the dog when they pee in the house or poop in the house. Take them outside immediately. And pretty soon they're going to decide, hey, it's a lot. I'm not going to break the rules because dogs won't follow you. They're a pack animal. The pack would have never survived if they were fighting amongst themselves or disobeying the rules. So dogs innately, when they're born, want to please man. Take advantage of that. Just make it clear what your problem is and that'll be fine. One other little trick you can use, especially if you have an older dog, and I'm sure a ton of you out there have already heard about this, but please tell your friends. Get you a little, <coughs> little copper bell, any kind of bell, any kind of noise maker. Someone showed me some pet manufacturer now has an automated doorbell that the dog can step on that you put by the back door. But you can hang just a little old $2 bell on the string at your, off your back door knob or your front door, wherever you want them to go. Hang it down just low enough that the dog can hit it with his nose or his head. Every time you let your dog out, reach up and ring the bell. Take your foot, kick the bell. He goes out, kick the bell. He goes out, kick the bell. At some point, if he has been corrected for peeing in your house and he wants to go outside, it's going to be just like you on that long trip waiting for your, your, your brother to get out of the bathroom so you can get in and use it, right? Because it's just a one holder. You know, you sit there and you kind of do this. Well, that's what your puppy's going to be doing, and he's going to look over going, oh, that bell, bang, bang, bang with his nose, you're going to hear the bell ringing. Because most of the people that tell me their dogs are still having accidents in the house also tell me when I ask, where is the accident at? Well, it's right by the back door, just a foot or two from the back door. To which I reply, if you were listening to your dog, he would have gone outside, because that's why it's at the back door. So. so we are smart. Yeah, aren't we, though? Okay. Troy from Second Wind 75 is here. He hey, said, Troy. Hey. Good to see you, man. Uh, and D D N L Salting had a question. Um, it said, what if the dog doesn't display guilt? Then what do you do? <coughs> hey, D, that's a that's really a good question. Thank you. If the dog doesn't display guilt when you're doing that, because you call it with a happy tone of voice, well, that means the dog has not figured out yet that he's not supposed to be using your house for, for a a bathroom. So all you've got to do, again, let him know the rules of the pack. You're going to say in a stern voice, you're going to first look him in the eye. When a mama dog corrects a pup, when a pack leader corrects anybody in the pack, they always start with eye contact. So look at your pup. When he looks up at you, let your voice tone reflect that you're not happy. Make a point. And I'm sorry I'm laughing when he's giving me looks here. Make, point at your dog, and you're going to say with a stern voice, say their name first, Winnie, no. Let, let him see, let see, go, what, did I do something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Come here, Winnie, I'll forgive you. So you're going to do that, and when you see, when you say the word no properly, you'll get a physical reaction from the dog. They'll duck their head, they'll turn away, break eye contact. There's going to be something that tells you they understood that you are not happy with that situation. Mm -hmm. The next time you call them in, I guarantee you, they will now know, oops, I shouldn't have done that. Sometimes just tell them no the first time will correct the sense more sensitive dogs like Australian Shepherds. <laughs> Are you laughing at her? She's cheering on your chair. Yeah. You were good, huh? J Jamil said, hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Is that Jamil? Jamil? Hey. hey, Jamil, how's the baby? And then, Alley Cat had a unique question that said, do you find a purebred will not potty in the house versus a mixed pup? 
<laughs> so do you think the purebreds are more likely to, I guess, not be in the house versus a mixed breed? Because they're I'll smarter, tell you something here, folks. Let me, let me just rock everybody's world. Do it, Butch, do it. When, when, <laughs> I think I know where this one's going. When, 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 I, when I'm dealing with all the rescue dogs, and for a while I had a lot of feral <coughs> dogs, when, when we get feral dogs in the kennel, they won't even pee in the kennel. You have to let them out for grass or dirt because that's where they first peed and pooped. And that's, that they are, anyone would adopt one and say, well, they're just, they were just automatically housebroken, automatically. Now, those are feral dogs. What's that tell you? If, you're, if, you're, if you raise a young pup, peeing in one place in one, or one, one cent or older, that's where they're gonna go. And whether it's purebred or mutt makes zero difference, zero. Uh, if anything, I would give the nod to the the, uh, the mutts because because their ancestry, if they're you know maybe street dogs or something of that nature, means they had to learn to fight for survival, and they're not going to make you mad as quick as some of the purebreds who don't care because they're special. <laughs> Especially the show dogs. Especially the show yeah. dogs. They're very special, and you don't yell at them for being a pooping. No, you don't. <laughs> Just say, okay, they as long their as, feelings hurt. Yes, they'll hurt their feelings and then they won't stand pretty in the show ring. So <laughs> not meaning, not 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 making fun of show dogs or anything like that, just laughing at them. You had a show dog at one point. I have had a lot of show dogs. I used to show dogs. We show great names in the show ring. Yeah. Masad said to, uh, 79 says good evening from Arkansas. Hope you all are well. Thank you. Hey Masad. Yeah. He's we're we're well. talking to Masad on the phone. We're well. Jamil, by the way, just had a wife, had a baby. Had a wife. Had a wife. He had a wife. His wife had a baby, so congratulations on the baby, Jamil. Hope, hope, hope uh, your wife's getting to listen to this and enjoying it, seeing a little bit of what, what you got to put up We got up you here. some cool stuff. Jamil, for those of you who don't know, he's our decoy. He's our number two uh, training decoy, agitator. Does a great job, great work. He's also our our technical cameraman and, and uh, sound sound technician. For so I hope it's going good tonight yeah. because we have Stan running it. <laughs> woo woo A little scary. So uh, this is just a me question. How early can you train a dog to be housebroken? Mm. Well, Spudge, how early? How early? How early do they start pooping? Um, like what? When they're Five, born? six days? Get after it. Oh, no, 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 no. no. All right, so here's how it works. Mama cleans them completely for the fur until they're weaned. As long as they're nursing, she's going to clean them up. She'll lick them and lick it all up, right? As soon as they get on solid food... All hell broke loose. Huh? All hell broke loose. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, Carrie did some of this. <laughs> what happened when they got on solid food, Carrie? Oh, jeez. <laughs> there's poop everywhere. I'm just kidding. Yeah, there's... When, when they get on the solid food, Mama goes to lick it up, and then there's this odor that has suddenly developed. <laughs> and Mama goes, whoa, whoa, not in my she mouth. Don't I, ain't, want none of that. I ain't doing none of that, you know. Mm -hmm. So you can actually start, if you will take a puppy, it's, but it's so hard because they, if you'll take a puppy at, let's say you wean them at four to six weeks, if you will feed that little fella three times a day until he's 10 weeks old, feed him. Put it, oh, I've got some on the water peeing in the house, too. You want to go see her? Feed that, feed that six-week-old puppy. Put it outside for 30 minutes where he's peeing outside. He'll grow up just like a feral dog where he thinks the only place he can poop is in the grass. Now, let's address peeing one time. If you if you got it, same thing applies as far as correcting them when they pee. But a lot of people have asked me, you know, what happens at night? Because... He's in all night. He's got to pee. So here's the rule of thumb. Two hours before bedtime, get you an ice cube, put it in his bowl. If he licks up the ice cube, that's all he needs. But pick up all your water, two hours before <coughs> bedtime, put him out in the yard for a half hour before he goes to bed, or at least 15 minutes. If you've given him that ice cube, or excuse me, give him the ice cube, when he comes back in, if he put the ice cube down in case he's thirsty. He'll get moisture from the ice, from the water, melting water, but his tongue will also get kind of numb and he'll feel like he's had a drink 
and he does not fill his bladder, so there's nothing to worry about sleeping through the night. So, two hours before bedtime, pick up the water, and put him out 15 to 30 minutes before bedtime, bring him in with just an ice cube, go to sleep, and not worry about that. Any more questions? Any more thoughts? And that, was uh, be, that was my next question. Stop. I, I just wanted to say that I probably trained my Western Shepherd in like three, four days. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, but that might be because he's a Western Shepherd. Well, that's because but the way Butch raises the puppies, when once they get weaned, he puts all the pads. I did down everything. And I the pads. yes, and I did everything Butch told me to do when I took him home. Everything. So I mean, he, what, I mean, what, I really one of the rare times I might add. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted. I yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I, because I'm obedient, but I didn't want to poop in the house. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do everything. Tell me when it comes to my dog's obedience. The kennel help, I run it the way I want. Yes, right. This is the kennel boss, by the way, folks. I, but when it comes to my dog, you know what you're talking about. And my, my dog is, he's so spoiled, but he's. He's what? He's good. I mean, his obedience, I mean, he's great. He's, is he great? Yeah. He's spoiled to death, but I mean. He's just great? He, no, he's freaking amazing. So, <laughs> but this is one that you like to, to talk about when people come out here. Uh -huh. If you want the dog to go in a specific area. Ah, okay. Yeah, keeping the easy, easy clean up in your backyard. What are you Remember doing? what I said about if you paper trained them in that room, like I explained, all you gotta do is go out and put that newspaper down. Or when they're starting out, if, if you haven't paper trained them, you just go out there wherever they poop. They'll start going to automatically going to one spot. They're going to be attracted to go back to that to where that smell is. If you will pick that up at least every other day, you're going to leave the odor, but you're not going to leave the solids. The reason dogs go to different places to poop is because it gets too messy. Remember, they like to avoid their own waste. They don't like to be in their own waste. So when they've got a pile here, a pile here, a pile there, they're, they're going to always go back to that same general area, but that general area is going to start spreading and spreading and spreading. If you just go out every other day at least, you should go out daily. If you go out there daily, it take you 43 seconds, right, Carrie? Well, I have a couple of dogs, so it takes me a little bit longer than 43 <laughs> seconds. But I go about every other day, and yeah, if I pick it up, it's all in the same spot. It's all in the same area. Now I have gone a week or two because I get super busy, right. and then it's all over my. I mean, like literally everywhere. But if I pick it up every day or every other day, they go in the same spot. There you go. There's and with a million dogs, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> There's a live testimony right there. I wasn't counting on that, but I forgot to. Yeah. Carrie listens to me when I'm talking about dogs. That's about it. But at least she listens to me then, right? That's right. Alley Cat says she does it daily. That's the key. She yeah. does what? It daily. Poop. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Alec. I appreciate that testimony. Yeah. I mean, it, no, it works. Daisy K said very good information. Good. Are Thank you chewing on my boot? That's what we're trying to do for everybody. We appreciate that. Appreciate appreciate you letting us know it helps. Like Mr. Himes used to say, educate, educate, educate. There you go, Mr. Paul Himes. And it's just little things that make a huge difference. Stop chewing on my boot. Like well, she's going to make it damage. If, if anybody has any suggestions for the next podcast, uh, leave them in the comment section. We'll look at them over the the week. And if nobody comes up with any ideas, we will Think come up something. with something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And we appreciate you folks, especially as long as, it, as long as it's helping, we're going to keep doing this. So Stop. let us know if we're helping. Let us know if the information's good. And then just remember one thing, right, Stan? If, if you, you ain't, ain't having, having fun, fun, you ain't training, training dogs. dogs. If you your go. dog ain't having fun, well, you're just doing it wrong, so try something else. <laughs> yeah, just stop. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> just leave it alone. Leave it to the professionals. Oh, never, right. never a dull moment around here. Yes, never, yes. never. never. Right, thanks, guys, for hanging out with us tonight. Appreciate you guys a lot. Thanks. See you guys soon. Bye. Can you train your dog now?